<laughs> What's up everyone, how are you doing? This week, I wanna talk about a three day long trip to Prague that I took a little while back. But why is it on my mind all of a sudden? Well, it started earlier this week. I ran, worked, and went to the circus. It was Circus Lay's Volta show, and it was amazing. If you get the chance, definitely go. While watching the show, I felt like it transported me to this faraway magical land. And that's what got me thinking about the first time I actually went traveling. That's right, it's time for episode four of Artem's Past Adventures. If you haven't seen the first three, here's a convenient playlist. They're all connected, so check it out. In the previous episode, I visited my birthplace, Ukraine. And right after that, since we were already in Europe, my mom and I decided to take advantage of that. And as you've probably guessed, go to Prague, the capital of Czech Republic. Neither one of us really knew anything about the place, or really anything about traveling at the time. So we just tackled this trip by going with the flow. It was a little scary, but it all worked out in the end and ended up being one of my favorite trips ever. And I learned a ton, making me the travel master. I'm just kidding. But I would love to share everything I have learned with you. My tips will be especially useful if you're planning on going to Prague for the first time. The fun started out right out of the gate when we arrived in our hotel. It was so comfortable and right in the thick of it, right in the middle of Wenceslas Square, which put us walking distance away from something like 90% of all tourist attractions we're seeing. If you ever come to Prague, I would recommend staying somewhere around here as well. And considering the convenience, it was really affordable too. Actually, everything in Prague was. I really didn't expect that for a place so beautiful and so well maintained. One final cherry on top was the very unexpected but massive cultural and historical significance of the room we were staying in. So as a little backstory, in 1989 Czechoslovakia had a peaceful revolution called the Velvet Revolution, where basically they abolished communism. The revolution was started and fueled by an iconic speech by a poet, Václav Havel, who at the end of the revolution ended up being elected president. He gave this speech from the balcony of the Melantric building. The balcony of the room we were staying in. I thought it was so cool. And the view of the Vincesta Square from the balcony was equally as cool. No wonder he picked that spot. <laughs> the first place we decided to go to, and I recommend going to as well, was the Old Town. Prague was one of those Central Europe cities not destroyed by the World War II, so it was an amazing look at how Europe used to be. I loved the aesthetic of little narrow streets with open courtyards in between, often housing uh, outdoor cafes. It was very maze-like and easy to get lost in, but honestly, that was part of the fun to me. At the center of the maze was the old town square, with a big old church watching over it, a cool huge monument at the center, and another massive tourist attraction I recommend seeing, the astronomical clock. As I found out later, the third oldest astronomical clock in the world. This one was made all the way back in 1410. Luckily, we got there right as it went off and got to watch the 12 apostles walk by in the two little windows above. Next, we walked to Charles Bridge. I called it Carl's Bridge for the longest time, but I mean, is that really wrong? It's called Karlov Bridge in Czech. Come on, Karlov, Carl's, you know what I mean? The bridge was another cool piece of history, and they started building it even before the clock in 1357. When it was done, it was the only bridge crossing the Vltava River till the 1800s, so it was a huge deal for a couple hundred years. It's a really cool, intricate, an honestly beautiful piece of historical architecture. And for that, it also earns a recommendation from me. You have to see it in person to really appreciate it. So seeing historical and just places in general is cool, but if that's all you do, I don't think it's possible to get a full sense of the culture that way. There are two inseparable things that make up traveling for me. One of them being, of course, discovering all the cool, awe-inspiring, interesting places. And the other, equally as important, is discovering all the delicious, authentic local food. And that's exactly what we did next. We went to a place called Novomietzky Pivovar. But come on, it's not the place that's important. It's what we got there. If you ever go to Prague, you absolutely cannot miss out on the beer, especially their Pilsner. It's one of the best you'll ever have anywhere. And it makes sense. After all, Pilsner was born in the Czech Republic. As far as food goes, I recommend the iconic pork knuckle. It comes with a special sauce and some sauerkraut and some other stuff. And it's honestly altogether the size of like two 
two or three meals, but I just couldn't stop eating it. It was that good. Also, the local potato dumplings are definitely a must try. So up till now, we haven't left the east side of Charles Bridge. So the next day, we decided to go to the west. We decided to go to St. Vitus Cathedral, towering up on the horizon. So with only a vague understanding of where we were going, we crossed the bridge and headed in that general direction. It turned out to be on a huge hill. Apparently there's a tram that goes up there, but we had no idea at the time. Instead, we stumbled onto the old castle stairs, a long steep staircase leading up to the cathedral. It was a really tiring climb, but it was worth it to me. Something about it felt really authentic. I mean, people back in the day didn't have trams. Plus, it gave me a chance to work off the pork knuckle from the night before. Okay, fine, a quarter of the pork knuckle. I definitely wouldn't blame you if you took the tram though. The stairs led us to a huge open space and the entrance to Prague Castle, something we weren't expecting. I mean, we were there for a cathedral. The line to get in was enormous and the cathedral seemed like it was behind Prague Castle. It was really far away from the gate. So my mom and I decided to be smart and try and walk around Prague Castle and get to the cathedral that way. On our way around, we found a big movie set and that was cool, but we weren't getting any closer to our destination. It actually seemed like we were getting further away. So we ended up stopping in the middle of the street and we're debating turning around and seeing if there was another way. We happened to stop right in front of this little easy to miss gate that led to this sketchy looking trail around this abandoned looking uh, tennis court. And for some reason, there was a police officer guarding it. As soon as we came up to him uh, to ask for directions, hoping he spoke English, he spoke to us first. He was like, oh, welcome, welcome, come on in. I just need to check your bags. So we reluctantly agreed and went inside. What's the worst that could happen, right? Well, this turned out to be the right thing to do. We just happened to stumble onto a little side entrance to the Prague Castle Royal Gardens. This place ran right alongside the castle wall and the little abandoned looking path that we took ended up being so cool. It was a huge contrast to everything that we've seen up until now. It ended up being this beautiful, peaceful, authentic experience with no tourists in sight. To tell you the truth, this was one of the moments I appreciated the most. This path took us up to a side entrance into Prague Castle grounds, which is exactly where the cathedral ended up being. Not behind like we thought, but right in the middle. So if you're ever in Prague and for some reason only have a few hours to spare, this is the place you should go to. The cathedral itself and everything surrounding it is absolutely worth seeing. The thing is enormous. It's actually the biggest church in the entire country. And this location was actually the most historically significant out of any we visited on this trip. First of all, there are a ton of Bohemian and Holy Roman emperors buried in the crypts under the church. And second of all is the age of the place. Apparently, there's been a church here since year 930. That feels so weird to say, because my instinct is to say 1930, but like that's not right. And the current cathedral started its life in 1344, even before the bridge. The most impressive thing about it to me, besides the fact that it was built with these like ancient tools, that's honestly something I'll always be fascinated with when it comes to like all of these old architecture and sculptures and stuff. Like how did they do that? How did they do that? It was the fact that the building looked amazing at every scale. What I mean is that it was a beautiful piece of architecture as a whole. But if you were to look close, the ornaments on all the doorways and all the door handles and the decorations on all the walls and the stained glass windows, every tiny detail was so thought out and so intricate, but it all fit together so well. Like it's a marvel to look at today, but back in the day, hundreds of years ago, I can't imagine what it felt like to see this thing. My favorite part was the clock tower. It was actually the tallest part of the entire building and we were allowed to go inside. I took this tiny narrow spiral staircase all the way to the top and saw one of the best views in Prague. Also, a side note, I definitely felt like I was transported back in time when I was climbing this like dank, narrow, steep, like moldy smelling, dimly lit spiral staircase. So whenever I saw other tourists in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, whoa, shoot, man, you're, what are you doing here? Are you, are you a time traveler too? As one last bonus, you also get to see the clock mechanism at the very top. Just the whole experience was amazing. After getting a bite to eat, we stumbled into a place called Wallenstein Palace Gardens. The palace now serves as a building for the Czech Senate, but we stumbled into it because it looked cool. I guess like the rest of our trip. And there were pheasants walking all over the place. Night and day, if I may, may, may. 
Higher up, the same hill that the cathedral is placed on is a place called Petrin Park. And at the tallest point of this park is something called Petrin Tower. It's a lookout with apparently a better view than even the cathedral clock tower. Well, we were kind of not feeling it anymore. <laughs> Listen, I've had this Fitbit for three years now and I love walking and running regularly. But that day, until today, remains my highest step count on record. We finished up our day with Mozart's Requiem in a Catholic church right next to Charles Bridge. You know, we figured this would be another way to experience Prague culture by going to all kinds of events that actual locals would go to. Our last day was very chill. Old Town and Charles Bridge were cool, but we decided to see what was in the opposite direction. Almost right away, we stumbled into what looked like a random piece of Gothic architecture that seemed kind of out of place, surrounded by you know all the modern buildings. So we decided to go up inside and take a look. Turns out it's something called the Powder Tower. It was one of the 13 original gates leading into the Old Town Prague. I learned that the main purpose of this particular building wasn't defensive. It was meant to be a beautiful entrance into the city. And beautiful it was. After some wandering around random neighborhoods, we just wanted to see how people actually lived here. We found a huge plaza with something called the Hibernia Theater. They were playing Swan Lake later that night, so we decided to go. Now, I want to be honest with you. Out of everything I mentioned on this trip, this is one of those places I wouldn't recommend going to. And the reason for this is because I don't really remember the performance. Maybe I was just tired, but more likely it just wasn't that memorable. While waiting for the show to start, we stumbled into this cool, intricate looking bakery cafe. It was called Paul or Paou. Uh, it's a French bakery. After looking into it, I found that it's actually a French bakery chain. This particular one was one of many. So you're probably wondering, why am I mentioning this random like French bakery chain? Well, this was one of the best French bakeries I have ever been to. Okay, let me rephrase that. This was the best French bakery that I've ever been to. It beats every single place that I've been to here on the west coast of the United States. The show ended right in time for dinner. And after I had my goodbye pork knuckle, since uh, the first one from two days ago was finally done digesting, we uh, went back to our place and uh, flew out the next morning. This trip was close to perfect and completely stress-free. And this is because we didn't have any schedules hurrying us around and making us feel stressed, making us feel like we're late everywhere, you know? But if I were to do it over, I think I would do a little bit more research. At the same time, some of the places we stumbled into were a lot more obscure and were actually kind of tough to find when I was looking into them on Google. So I don't know, maybe research would have made this trip less authentic, but that is just my perspective. What's yours? How do you travel? I would genuinely love to know because I'm so new to this. Let's teach each other. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next Thursday in another episode of A Talk With You. Peace.